yesterday, but let me guide you through. So we've received uh, a considerable number of um, uh, call, uh, of, of inputs this year. So compared to last year, we only had um, 193 uh, stakeholders taking part, while this year we had 310. We received a total of 824 selected themes out of this list of 11, and um, a total of 1,549 selected issues. So as you may know, people can select up to three themes and uh, part of the, uh, these themes, you have a list of issues and they can select up to three issues. Um, we also had a comment section where we uh, asked for the IGF's contribution to global initiatives, but also um, asking them how we can actually have the design and uh, um, of, of this year's IGF. So um, who submitted uh, here some information about uh, people submitting on their personal capacity or on behalf of their organization, very comparable to last year, we have um, up to nearly 60% of people actually submitting in uh, their personal capacity, the rest of course on behalf of their organization. When it comes to, to gender, um, we, just for information, we only uh, calculated the proportions of gender from those who submitted in their personal capacity, but not on behalf of the organization. Here, unfortunately, um, it's pre pre uh, pretty uh, disproportionate. Also compared to last year, uh, we only have 30% of um, uh, women. Now to the stakeholder groups. Um, the largest group is a civil society um, that matches with actually last year. And one positive uh, development is actually an increased um, uh, participation of government, which is 14% this year, while it was a little bit less, I think 10% uh, only last year. Good. So just uh, for you to have like um, general numbers, civil society, we had 136 um, uh, people who participated, uh, private sector 61, technical community 56, government 44, and IGOs 13, uh, giving a total of uh, 310. Good. Now when it comes to the regional groups, um, the African group um, participated the most. Uh, again, just to give you a general number, those are 120 submissions, uh, closely followed by the Asia Pacific group, 22%. Uh, the Western and other groups, and um, going to Gulag, IGOs, and finally Eastern European group. Those were merely 14 uh, people from the Eastern and European group taking part in, in uh, the call for, for input. Good. Um, now, when it comes to the selected themes, um, you notice probably that artificial intelligence and cybersecurity and trust um, are the top two. 17%, so approximately 139 uh, submissions, closely followed by data governance, rights and freedoms, and uh, universal access and meaningful um, connectivity. Here you can also see uh, the, the last five, uh, five of the um, list of 11 issues. Now, what might also be interesting to you is, of course, um, the selected issues under a theme. So here, artificial intelligence, the number one of selected theme, we had a list of six issues, AI ethics, AI governance, and also AI risk being the top, top three. Um, cybersecurity and trust, uh, here, as you can see, uh, child online safety, but also cyber attacks and cyber conflict are on the very top, closely followed by cybersecurity practices. Data governance, um, as you can see, 31% is data privacy and protection. Then uh, you will have data free flow and data localization, and I let you go through, through the rest. Now, when it comes to uh, rights and freedoms, um, rights and freedoms, you would have, of course, uh, human rights on uh, top. Sorry, human rights on top, then uh, followed by civil, political, economic, social, and cultural rights, and then um, the gender rights and uh, freedoms. 
here again, I, I give you some time for the universal access and meaningful connectivity um, results, uh, access and connectivity being on the top, uh, one fourth, while you have digital inclusion and capacity development also uh, in the top three. Now, when it comes to digital cooperation, you can see that broadening stakeholder engagement in internet governance is on top, followed by multi-stakeholderism and multidisciplinarity. And uh, the top, the number three is indeed the IGF organization and role. Now going over to emerging technologies and innovation. So last year, artificial intelligence was one of the issue, but this year artificial intelligence became a theme, just considering the, um, uh, the importance of uh, artificial intelligence nowadays. Um, top one is indeed 5G, followed by data sharing and research and internet of things. As you can see, there is quite a long list of emerging technologies and innovation issues here. Good. Now, going back to uh, environmental sustainability and climate change, um, the themes were uh, the issues were rather broad. So you can see sustainable development is the top one, climate change is the number two, and the number three is climate digital technologies. Um, now, the so when it comes to media and content, uh, misinformation is uh, pretty high on the list, followed by content policy and regulation. And as number three, you, uh, number three, yeah, you can see the citizen journalism. Um, then we're going over to economic uh, economic issues and uh, development. So you can see the digital literacy and future of work is pretty high up. And uh, same goes for e-commerce and e-trade. But then you can also see e-education and business models online uh, pretty on the same um, uh, same level. Uh, last but not least, the technical and operational topics. Uh, we do have the domain uh, name system, internet routing, and also internet protocols uh, on the same level than uh, network issues. So um, this was for the issues. Now, perhaps for interest uh, to you, what were the themes selected by region? Here uh, you have for, for Africa, artificial intelligence and cybersecurity and trust. We're pretty high up together with uh, data governance. So just for you to know, um, in, so all the regions had at least artificial intelligence or cybersecurity in the top three and top four. Now going to Asia Pacific, artificial intelligence and cybersecurity again are uh, in the top two, while data governance uh, is also in the top three. So pretty similar to the African respondents. When it comes to Eastern Europe, again, uh, there were only 14 respondents, but still um, you can see that cybersecurity and artificial intelligence are pretty high up, uh, followed this time by digital cooperation. When it comes to the IGOs, so um, you can see that for the IGOs, uh, universal access and meaningful connectivity is uh, the most important. And then on the same level, you can find artificial intelligence, digital cooperation and rights and freedoms. Um, then going uh, to Latin America and the Caribbean, um, cybersecurity and trust again, uh, artificial intelligence, but also universal access and meaningful connectivity. So this one changes a little bit compared to the other uh, regions and closely followed by rights and freedoms. Now uh, coming to the last group, Western European and others groups. Here uh, you have cybersecurity and trust uh, together with rights and freedoms and uh, followed by uh, artificial intelligence, data governance, and digital cooperation being on the same level. And here it gives you a slide, um, so an overview to compare better all the uh, various regions and the themes that they've been selecting. Now, um, issues by the region. So uh, we're also um, uh, analyzing the top issues that were selected by the various regions. Here you have uh, the top four of what um, was important to uh, the African respondents. So AI governance, pretty high up. Um, under data governance, you had data privacy and protection. Then again, under the, the theme AI, you had AI ethics. And then cybersecurity um, with the issue cyber attacks and cyber conflicts. Good. 
Now, following um, the African respondents, you have the Asia Pacific. Again, here you can see that um, cyber security, but also artificial intelligence were uh, in the top uh, four of issues selected, which are AI governance, ethics, uh, child online safety, and cyber attacks and cyber conflict. Now, going over to Eastern Europe, um, you have you can see the AI, but also cyber attacks, and this time digital cooperation. So the issue international cooperation on data, precisely. And for the IGOs, the most, um, here you have actually the general numbers always, the most selected um, issue was AI governance, uh, followed by multi-stakeholders, misinformation and accessibility. Good. Um, Latin America and Caribbean, AI ethics pretty high up, then uh, followed on the same level um, with uh, access and connectivity and digital inclusion, and also data privacy and data protection. So this would be data governance theme. Last but not least, uh, the, the VEOC group, uh, again, AI governance, data free flow, which is part of the data governance theme, then digital cooperation with multi-stakeholders and multidisciplinarity, and then followed by cybersecurity with the issue cyber attacks and cyber conflicts. Good. Here again, uh, an overview of issues by, by region. And now we wanted also to show the themes uh, that the various stakeholders have um, selected. So civil society, uh, I, I let you have a look. Again, artificial intelligence and cybersecurity pretty high up. Um, rights and, and freedoms as uh, the number third. Going over to governments, again, um, we had a little bit more governments uh, responding to the poll, which um, we welcome very much with cybersecurity and trust on um, as top one, followed by data governance and artificial intelligence. When it comes to IGOs, um, we have artificial intelligence on, on top, but again, uh, you could have told from the issues selected, universal access and meaningful uh, connectivity was also pretty high up on their agenda and uh, data governance being uh, on the same level with digital cooperation. Now, coming to the private sector, um, on the same level, artificial intelligence and cybersecurity and trust, and then data governance. I give you a second to have a look at the remaining themes. And, oops. Um, Louis? Yes. Give me one more second. I have to uh, restart the presentation. Apologies for that. Good. And um, here is the overview of themes Oops, by region, but let me quickly scroll down. Apologies. Here, um, the overview of themes by stakeholder groups. And when it comes to the comment section, um, I would invite you to have a closer look. Um, basically, what was very important to most of them is really the uh, multi-stakeholder aspect of the IGF, that this feeds into the work of um, our common agenda, but also of the GDC. And um, it was suggested um, Give me a second, I apologize.
Okay. Um, I hope you can see my screen now. Um, here, so um, what was important to the respondents is, uh, of course, to continue to align the IGF annual meetings agenda and program and its intersessional work with our common agenda and the 12 commitments. Also, of course, um, to, to contribute as good as possible to the global digital compact. So uh, developing aligned messages, for example, that could feed into uh, informal consultations, but also into the zero draft. Um, also to have NRIs and youth inputs included as much as possible. Um, some respondents asked whether the GDC related information can also be shared on the IGF website. And what I was, I, uh, what I was mentioning just before is uh, to really have to promote this unique IGF multi-stakeholder and bottom-up transparent uh, governments model in the development of the GDC. Um, I'll let you go over a few other uh, topics that were related to the GDC and also to the common agenda, but um, we've also been asked to actively participate in the Net Mundial Plus 10 and OSS Plus 20 review process. And last but not least, um, also use the IGF 2024 as a platform to discuss the final report of the high level advisory body on AI. Now, when it comes to the overall format and design of the IGF, so during the in-person meeting, um, during the in-person meeting um, end of February, we'll also provide a, a more detailed uh, feedback on the um, taking stock that we've received uh, shortly after the um, IGF 2023. But here again, we've asked for some input from all the respondents um, to this call for input. Basically, what was suggested several times is to limit the number of thematic tracks to simplify uh, the IGF program as well. So by reducing number of sessions, but also types, so that uh, we can hopefully decrease the complexity of um, the IGF, also for newcomers especially. Um, review also the allocation of sessions in the program that are not workshops. Um, one other comment was also to enhance the interactive schedule um, and release it in a more accessible format. We've heard it already several times and of course are taking note of that. Um, then several requests of organizing fully virtual sessions, um, improve the accessibility also of each session so that basically both remote and in-person um, participants are treated equally. We've heard several times that uh, remote participants were, for example, not really given the floor when they raised their hands, et cetera, et cetera. Um, one other important aspect actually is also to green uh, the, the events by implementing some sustainable event management practices that was also uh, suggested um, one, two times. And, um, introduce and support more interactive and participatory sessions. So uh, some uh, respondents provided some examples, for example, hackathons or uh, some working groups, uh, practical exercises, et cetera, et cetera. Then um, it came up several times to increase meaningful participation of marginalized and vulnerable groups, including in IGF decision-making processes. And I think that uh, the, the proposal of um, Saba later on, on uh, the working group on youth engagement might be a good start. Um, also, it was uh, asked to recognize youth, the youth as a separate stakeholder. Um, and I let you go through um, the, the other suggestions, but basically um, we've had a lot of, of comments. You can have a look at it, a closer look at it. We'll also have a, a more detailed report on the IGF 2023 uh, taking stock. And um, now we're actually coming to the end of the presentation. So if you have any questions or comments, um, you can ask them now. Thank you.